The views and opinions expressed on America's Workforce Union podcast and its digital media channels are solely those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the producers or sponsors. Welcome to the America's Workforce Radio Podcast, the flagship production of the American Workers Radio and Podcast Network, where organized labor and its never-ending fight to protect the rights of the American worker come first. Now, presented by LIUNA, Laborers International Union of North America, here's your host, Ed Flash Ferrens. Employers cannot force workers to listen to captive audience meetings, a ruling from the National Labor Relations Board. Now the question is, will it stand? I think we know the answer to that one. Today on the show, the latest from the American Legion and the Alliance for Retired Americans. Welcome to the Friday, November 15th edition of America's Workforce, where we are available on at least five platforms, including YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Pandora. Jeff Stouffer will be our first guest on the show today, longtime supporter of America's Workforce. He comes to us from the American Legion. We'll preview the December issue. A couple of stories, and I'll tell you, scamming. This is huge in America. $477 million. That is the amount that scammers stole from veterans, military personnel, and spouses. And that was just last year alone. Yeah. $599. So let's just use a figure of 600 bucks. That's the amount that veterans lose to scams, which, by the way, is 20% more than the general population. And a lot of young service members are being targeted. Why is this happening? Technology. Technology has made Americans and their money more available to scammers. Alan Greenblatt is the uh, author of this article in the December edition of the American Legion magazine. And uh, Jeff's going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the 125th anniversary of the Army-Navy game. How about that? More than a game. That's the uh, title of this article. And I'll talk about uh, a passion for America over the past 11 seasons. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA has averaged more than 7.1 million TV viewers, while on a regular basis, they sell out the host stadium. They call it America's Game. It draws a massive audience, one that starting this year will learn more about the American Legion and its most important mission. Nice twist there. And also, we're going to talk about dust-off crews. This is interesting. What are dust-off crews? These are the people, military personnel, that uh, care for the wounded soldiers on the battlefield. In fact, dust-off crews are credited with evacuating more than 900,000 people from 1962 to 1973 in that 11-year period. Well, the author of this article, Pat Brady, said back in 2015, he discovered that no unit from Vietnam had been awarded a Congressional Gold Medal as a dust-off crew. Well, that's changing now. Rich Fiesta will be joining us later in the show on behalf of the Alliance for Retired Americans, retiredamericans.org, where he serves as executive director, and he's going to talk about the election of last week, updated numbers nationally, just over 40 8% of all voters cast ballots for Vice President Harris. 50.1% voted for Trump. Not what you call a mandate. Rich reports there's no sugarcoating it. Last week's results were a major disappointment for Alliance members. There will very likely be renewed attempts to slash seniors' hard-earned Social Security and Medicare benefits and and roll back the progress the Biden-Harris administration made in lowering drug prices. Also, listen to this. Trump had talked about eliminating taxes on Social Security, benefits, tips, and overtime, which, by the way, sounds good, doesn't it? Well, guess what? That would cut up to three years off of Social Security solvency. Advancing the insolvency date 
from 2034 to as early as 2031. Now, there's some good news. On Tuesday night, just a couple of days ago, the U.S. House voted to correct a very serious injustice involving Social Security benefits that have been a problem for decades now. Retirees have congratulated lawmakers on passing the Social Security Fairness Act. This was House Resolution 82. The bill addresses the government pension offset, or GPO, and windfall elimination provision, which unfairly reduce Social Security benefits for public sector retirees who receive a public pension. Now, consider all the people that have worked in the private sector and the public sector. You work in the public sector, you get a public sector pension. When it comes to collecting for Social Security, they dock you. This has been going on for like 40 years. And apparently, the Alliance, one of many organizations that's been fighting this, had some success this week. So, uh, Rich, (laughs) a lot of bad news for the Alliance, but this is certainly some good news. RetiredAmericans.org is a national website. Now, a brief look into the world of labor. This segment brought to you by Boyd Watterson Asset Management. You can find more at BoydWatterson.com. Federal labor officials issued a ruling. This was Wednesday prohibiting employers from holding mandatory anti-union meetings at work, a long-sought policy objective of unions that want to level the playing field with corporations in an organizing campaign. The decision was three to one. The Democratic majority of the National Labor Relations Board said such workplace gatherings, often called captive audience meetings, tend to coerce employees and therefore violate the law. The case revolved, no surprise here, around the Amazon warehouse in New York City that became the retailers first to unionize two and a half years ago. Amazon enlisted managers and outside consultants to hold meetings where they fed employees anti-union talking points in the run-up to the vote. And the company, well, they spent millions on that campaign. Jennifer Abruzzo, the general counsel of the labor board, had argued that the meetings violate workers' rights when employees have no choice, none, but to attend and subject themselves to the company's messaging. Abruzzo, who prosecutes cases before the board, had said companies should still be free to make their case against unions, but they just shouldn't be able to force workers to listen to it. Well, the board ruled that such meetings, and this is a quote, have a reasonable tendency to interfere with and coerce employees in the exercise of their rights, including whether or not to unionize. The law does not license employers to compel employees on pain of discipline or discharge to attend meetings where they are forced to listen to the employer's views, the majority wrote. In signing with Abruzzo, And the Amazon workers, the board members, overturned a precedent from the labor board going back to 1948 that allowed for mandatory attendance under the threat of punishment. They also set up what could be a protracted legal fight over the ruling with employer groups all but certain to challenge the decision on First Amendment grounds. In a dissent, Marvin Kaplan, who is the board's only Republican, argued that the majority's effort to ban mandatory anti-union meetings is just as indefensible as it was back in 1948. He wrote, in fact, subsequent First Amendment jurisprudence has made it even clearer that the board simply does not have the power to prohibit captive audience speeches. Now, the Labor Board, which is an independent agency, that enforces collective bargaining law, has pursued a very aggressive pro-worker agenda during the Biden-Harris administration, making it easier for workers to form unions. In fact, the current NLRB's union and worker-friendly leanings are probably one reason, the main reason, that more employees are filing union petitions and unfair labor practice charges against their companies. We've talked about this on the show many, many times. However, that era 
is most likely coming to an end following President-elect Donald Trump's victory last week. Now, he is expected to fire Abruzzo on his first day in office and nominate a general counsel who will pretty much undo much of her agenda. No surprise there. Now, I want to tell you about uh, Lauren McFerrin. Now, she is the chair of the National Labor Relations Board. And in discussing the implications of the board's decision this week, she said, this decision better protects workers' freedom to make their own choices in exercising their rights while ensuring that employers can convey their views about unionization in a non-coercive manner. Amazon does plan to appeal the decision on the basis that it is a First Amendment violation and in direct contradiction with the text of the National Labor Relations Act. You know they're not going to take this lightly. But getting back to a Lauren McFerrin, and I got to credit Chris Lehman at The Nation magazine for this story. Back in August, the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, which is chaired by Bernie Sanders, voted to move McFerrin's confirmation to a full floor vote. However, her nomination has languished since then. I mean, this is what happens on the board. You have a certain time period, and then you renew that period. Now, with the Republicans set to take control of the Senate in January, Chris writes there's no time to waste in getting McFerrin over the line. Because if they don't confirm her, you know there's going to be a Republican on that board, and they're going to go against organized labor. So I hope the Democrats get their you-know-what together and get this done before January 20th. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Jeff Stouffer on behalf of the American Legion magazine. You're listening to America's Workforce with Ed Flash Ferrens. It takes Lyuna to power North America with affordable energy. The men and women of Lyuna, the Laborers International Union of North America, have the skills needed to build and maintain oil, natural gas, nuclear, solar, and wind projects that are shaping America's energy future. From new energy tech to retrofitted facilities, Lyuna members do it all. Find out what it takes to be powered by Lyuna at Lyuna.org. That's L-I-U-N-A dot org. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the United Steelworkers. You can find more at usw.org. Melwood is a dynamic nonprofit organization providing jobs and great opportunities for people with disabilities. And they do this through strategic partnerships with the federal government, unions, and community partners. Melwood is all about advancing economic independence for workers with disabilities, and they've been doing this for more than 60 years in Washington, D.C. and the surrounding area. Learn more about Melwood by visiting their website, melwood.org. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the Communication Workers of America. You can find more at cwa-union.org. We're the nurses, firefighters, and claims representatives that help keep our government services running. We respond to natural disasters. We care for our nation's veterans. And we investigate discrimination in the workplace. We are federal and D.C. government workers. And we are proud to serve the American people. Working in more than 70 agencies across the government, we know we can fulfill our mission because our union has our back. Learn more at AFGE. Dot O-R-G. Paid for by the American Federation of Government Employees, AFL-CIO. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the Iron Workers. You can find more at ironworkers.org. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the Heat and Frost Insulators Labor Management Cooperative Trust. Find out more at insulators.org forward slash LMCT. Now, back to Ed Flash Ferrens with America's Workforce. And don't forget, you can check us out on Facebook or follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter. That would be AWF Union Podcast, AWF Union Podcast. By the way, this next segment brought to you in part by the United Labor Agency, ULAgency.org is our website. Let's go to line number one. Welcome our featured guest for today. That would be Jeffrey Stouffer on behalf of the American Legion magazine. Legion.org is a website you want to go to. And if you're a member of the Legion, you should be getting 
your December issue very shortly. And today we're going to start off with scamming. This is so sad. And I'll tell you, I've, I've done a lot of stuff with the Better Business Bureau over the years. And I mean, going back a long time and ever since the advent of the internet, my gosh, it's exploded. And sadly, this story is about veterans, young veterans getting scammed. Jeff Stouffer, welcome back to the show. Talk to me about this article that uh, Alan Greenblatt put together about uh, how technology has really turn the tide on this one and not for the benefit, especially for our service members. Go ahead, brother. Thanks, Flash. Great to be on the show again. I, you know, this story has been brewing and we've been following it very closely. We had it occasionally, you know, on the vulnerability of military personnel uh, financially, you know, they're young, they're handling their finances for the first time. Maybe they're about, they move around a lot. They have to open and close a lot of accounts. And they are targeted by scammers. There is no question about it. In fact, and veterans in particular have a much higher, veterans and military personnel have a much higher percentage of, of getting scammed than the average uh, American. And yet all Americans, but veterans and service members in particular, have been seeing this increase in the number and the amount of money being scammed, uh, taken from, you know, the FTC uh, said that in 2023, scammers got $477 million from veterans, military personnel, and their spouses in 2023. That's a 13% increase from the previous year. And then you add it, look at, look at the, the amount, the average American consumer, just all Americans, consumers, reported losing to scams and fraud in 2023 was $10 billion with a B dollars. And that's up from $3.5 billion in 2020. So in just the last four years, we've seen this increase from $3.5 billion to $10 billion. And they're getting, they're very clever. And they are, the scammers are using technology and all kinds of different methods and strategies to get you to give them information and or money that they can use to fleece you. And young veterans are especially susceptible to getting ripped off. And, and what are they doing? What are the scammers? Are they actually targeting veterans or veterans just part of the big picture here? Maybe they're more vulnerable. I don't know. What's what's the answer to that? Well, I think that they are targeted as a, that, it's, it's got to be a market. I don't know if there's a scammers association where they sit down and they identify target markets, but they do know that those young service members and, the, and their families who have, you know, fairly fluid financial situations are ripe for the picking. And, you know, we've run into this before with, uh, you know, payday loans and stuff like that all, you know, they coagulate around military bases and a lot of these, a lot of these outfits that, that go in and they get, and military veterans, when they're young too, they have steady pay. They're kind of an easy uh, target for a lot of them. So it's, you know, it's very important that military members understand that, that if they get a call, if they get an email, if they get a text about something that asks about for their information or their money or anything or anything related to money, the first thing you do is say, let me call you back. Mm -hmm. And then you hang up <laughs> and then, and don't call back the number call the number of your bank or call the number of whoever that they claim to be representing. You know, we see all kinds, I get them. I'm sure you get them. Everybody gets these phishing. Yeah. This phishing thing is so obnoxious. And, you know, you get a, a you know, a, a text or an email saying your Amazon account has been, has needs to be updated immediately. Chances are that's a phishing expedition by a scammer. Yeah. So that you, you got hit it on the head. It's technology. And, uh, Alan Greenblatt brings up the point in this story that it used to be that they would have to, you know, get you on the phone from your landline or else try to con you in some other way in person or whatever. Now it's just a matter of sending out this hurricane of emails and text messages through the phones that we all carry around with us and on the hopes that you're going to open them and click the link. And if you click the link, you may be fine. You may already be scammed. Yeah. You, you know, we get all kinds of messages, you know, you, they get your information just by simply clicking. And, uh, you know, 
and when we talk about veterans, the two populations, veterans, military personnel, and seniors, because we have a lot of uh, senior veterans in the American Legion, and it is very true that, that seniors are highly targeted. This is a that 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 much we can pretty safely say that you know see that that generation grew up when the phone rang, you answered it, right? No matter what, exactly. You didn't look to see who was calling, and they may not understand that who they're talking to, if they sound authoritative, that they should respond and, and be uh, be reactive to it rather than being very suspicious and que- and questioning them. And, you know, they're, they're going to get uh, scammers, get the victims to, you know, circumvent the security systems that are set up for them. Your bank always knows your social security number. Your bank knows your birth date. Your bank does not ask you for your multi-factor authentication information and they don't ask you for those passwords or any of that sort of thing so mm-hmm. the best thing in here he says don't trust always verify exactly this is, is the kind of the repeating mantra but it, but it's not just this is not just we're not just doing this doing the story because scamming is growing as an industry i mean that is a it is a a terrible thing, you know, just bank transfers last year in 2023, just bank transfers, scammers built Americans out of $1.86 billion in fraudulent bank transfers. You know, I can't think of anything more abhorrent for someone to do than to try to take somebody's money in an unscrupulous way like that. But to target veterans, to tar- target seniors, to target our military is uh, even more alarming i think and they are high percentage of these scams are going through them yeah boy in my opinion there's a certain place in hell for anybody that does that kind of thing that that, that's just rotten it really is rotten and you mentioned seniors too i'm looking at some of the numbers here it's a triple whammy 450 dollars that is the medium loss reported by people in their 80s or older compared with 480 dollars among people in their 20s And I want to share with you, well, a couple of things that I've learned over the years. Number one, uh, if you get an email that says it's the IRS, don't open it because the IRS does not email. They do not email. They're saying, oh, maybe you're going to get a tax refund. Don't do that. Uh, The other thing, too, (laughs) this is kind of kind of funny in a way. For a while, I was getting emails from somebody in Nigeria, and they said that I had a family member that passed away there, leaving me with, uh, I think it was several million dollars. And what I had to do was to provide, here it comes, my social security number and all my bank account information so they could transfer. Here's where you're talking about those fraudulent transfers. So they can transfer that million or $2 million to my bank account. How about that one? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't realize I had relatives in Nigeria, but, you know, that was going on for quite some time. The Nigerian prince story. It's been out there. You know, and we hear that. We joke about it, but it's no joke. People do fall for that. And, you know, another one that they fall for is uh, romance. Uh, in for, you know, people will say, you know, we've got a, you know, I've been waiting for a, a guy just like you. And they, they prey on the lonely. They prey on people who are single older people who are single and whatever and they that they use romance as a lure to get you to actually send your financial information and it's that's a that's an extremely sad thing to to think about you know i agree there's a special place in hell for these people but yep another thing that you can do is check your um, credit reports and there's a way to freeze your credit reports so that others cannot open an account on using your information and you know it's just terrible that we have to go through all these precautions or that there's not systematic legal uh apparatus to ca- capture these guys but they're hard to catch yeah very and, hard. I, and you, you don't ever hear too much about people getting scammers getting a scammer ring getting caught and arrested and sent to prison you just know that it happens and people lose a lot of money very you know, sad and, and you know when you're, yeah it is so anyway with this is a a, a cautionary tale and kind of a, a sad phenomenon for a couple of our key markets military veterans and the elderly 
It's a heck of an article. Once again, it's going to be in the December edition of the American Legion magazine. All access technology has made Americans and their money more available to scammers. All right, we're going to take a quick break. More to come from Jeff later in the show. We're going to check in with Rich Fiesta on behalf of the Alliance for Retired Americans. What's the outlook for seniors in the new administration? We'll talk about that and more. Back in a few minutes. Don't go away. This is America's Workforce. It takes Lyuna to build North America's infrastructure. From roads and bridges to schools and skyscrapers, the men and women of Lyuna, the Laborers International Union of North America, build the projects we depend on. From constructing the Freedom Tower on the site of the former World Trade Center to untangling Washington, D.C.'s congested interstate, Lyuna members do the work that matters. Find out what it takes to be built by Lyuna at lyuna.org. That's L-I-U-N-A dot org. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the Heat and Frost Insulators Labor Management Cooperative Trust. Find out more at insulators.org forward slash LMCT. There is unity and strength for workers. We are the USW. We are the USW. The The United United Steelworkers. Steelworkers. The largest industrial union in North America. We represent 850,000 members in In the the US, US, Canada, Canada, and and the the Caribbean. Caribbean. We work in metals, rubber, chemicals, paper, oil refining, atomic energy, and the service sector. We are steel workers, standing strong and fighting for what's right. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, where you can find more at teamster.org. America's Workforce is sponsored in part by Boyd Watterson Asset Management, LLC. Find out more about our investment solutions tailored to meet the needs of Taft-Hartley funds at BoydWaterson.com. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the International Federation of Professional and Technical Engineers. You can find more at ifpte.org. Are you looking for a new health care partner for your union members? Let Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield be your champion, making sure your members live their healthiest lives. Now more than ever, it's important to have a partner you can trust, one who understands the unique challenges unions face. Anthem provides a variety of options to meet your organization's needs and helps you control costs without sacrificing quality of care. For more information, visit Anthem.com slash Labor and Trust. America's Workforce is presented by the Labor's International Union of North America. Feel the power right now at Lyuna.org. This is America's Workforce. More shows available at AWFRadio.com. And remember, you can check us out on at least five platforms. That includes YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Pandora. And when you get an opportunity, here's what you do. Just sign up, receive our shows on a regular basis, and give us a rating. We always appreciate those five-star ratings, so please keep them coming. Let's go back to our live line. Rejoin Jeff Stouffer on behalf of the American Legion magazine. A couple stories we're going through for the uh, December edition of the magazine. Dust-off crews. Dust-off crews receive congressional gold medal and i understand this is something that the legion has been working a long time on why don't you explain to our audience what what dust off crews are jeff it's all yours buddy yeah it, they were the medevac helicopter pilots they were the 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 hueys the uh, helicopter pilots and medics who flew into combat zones in the vietnam war and they collected wounded troops from out of the jungles and quickly got them to field hospitals and to medical care uh, during the Vietnam War. And it's it's a it's a phenomenon that, you know, uh, was really pioneered in the Vietnam War. There were helicopters, of course, in, in the Korean War, but not nearly as many, nor, as, nor was the process as effective. But this uh, Army Major Charles Kelly, who was a, a, a medevac helicopter in these Hueys, you know, who died uh, in the war, he, he actually pioneered this whole uh, operation. And, you know, just to put a bottom line on it, dust-off crews, they called them dust-off crews. And they're credited with evacuating more than 900,000 people in the Vietnam War from 1962 to 1973. And our article, the article that we have in the magazine in this December issue, 
um, is by uh, Major General Patrick Brady, who received the Medal of Honor as a dust-off pilot. And we know him very well. He was a member of our American Legion 100th Anniversary Committee. And he was very, uh, he has been a, a, a staunch spokesperson for the dust-off program, which we still use today. The medevac, a lot of the medevac principles that we used during the Vietnam War are still in use in various forms today, or were in the global war on terrorism. But, um, you know, he, 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 in his piece, he wrote the piece, and it was deservedly so, because it was in, back in the, like, 2014, 2015, he came to realize that not one unit from Vietnam had received a congressional gold medal. It's the only war in American history that had not been so recognized. And he brought it to the attention of Senator John Cornyn in Texas, and they, they wrote a bill. He worked with Brady to write the bill that would you know, recognize the pilots, the crew chiefs, and the medics who served under that radio call sign, dust off, that was a radio call sign, and to you know, honor those and the Gold Star families and everybody who kind of was at a stake in what these Huey pilots were able to accomplish. And honestly, we had a resolution, the American Legion had passed a resolution in support of the, of the Congressional Gold Medal and National Recognition for Dust Off crews. And back in 2015, 2016, and over the years, I kind of, you know, we kind of like lost, not lost sight of it, but I didn't, it's like many things, a bill gets written or an, or a resolution gets passed, what happens to it? And it doesn't, there's nothing, then all of a sudden in 2024, it did pass. It passed through Congress, and then on September 26, President Biden passed uh, Senate Resolution 2825, the dust-off crews of the Vietnam War Congressional Gold Medal Act, and it took you know perseverance to keep that bill alive and pushing forward and moving forward, and the case was made, and it was you know an overdue honor. You know the Vietnam War veterans have not been adequately thanked or recognized or even welcomed home through the years. And so to pay respect to these life-saving Huey pilots, these dust-off crews, um, was more than appreciated and was more than more than overdue, I would say, for this great honor. And, uh, and for it to be the only unit from the Vietnam War to receive such an honor, I think, is very important. And frankly, there needs to be more. But it's a great privilege to kind of know General Brady, and he, he has been uh, a frequent contributor to our magazine. He's written for us before. He's a writer. He's an author. Um, but he, uh, he has, this has been his primary interest over the years is to make sure that those, his, his, his comrades who flew those Hueys and saved all those lives on both sides through the years, um, through the Vietnam War, um, are adequately recognized. Yeah, almost a million people evacuated from 62 to 73. You know what's great about this article from uh, General Brady is the historical significance, and he uh, he writes about the Roman armies. They recognized that yeah. caring for the wounded was not only compassionate, but a combat multiplier. Men, he writes, fought better when they knew they would be cared for. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Yeah, and and the dead don't fight well, so they go. So if you get them back, get them back, get them to <laughs> they can actually return. They can return to fight. I think the Romans were not probably as compassionate as they were success oriented. Right. But, right. but he does go back through. He does go back through history and goes back to the kind of the the whole arc of 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 combat um, triage and and care. It's interesting. Yeah. I can't believe you said that. The dead don't fight well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on to the Army Navy game. 125 years for the Army Navy game. And it is a very, very watched game by Americans with that history. Talk to me about this uh, piece in the, the next issue. Well, this is really important to us in the American Legion because we are the first veteran service organization to become an associate sponsor. And it's a major sponsorship of the army navy game now in its 125th years 125th anniversary of the army navy game and uh it will be on december 14th at three o'clock and 
It's on CBS and it's a, it has a, tele, a television viewership of an average of 7.1 million every time it shows. The USAA is the lead 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 sponsor on it and they've been presenting it for the last several years but the army navy game the beauty the, the thing that i think draws people into it so much is it's it's appealing to non-sports fans too because it just is something about our men and men who are in football particularly um men who are are in uniform who are fighting for our country and i had a friend who actually went to west point and he played for army football and you know you can't believe how rigorous it is to play football and serve in a military academy as a first year cadet it's not an easy route and there's little sleep and there's a lot of pain and it's and it's tough so these guys are the toughest of the tough and um what, what i steve brooks did a, a really nice job he interviewed several former players uh phil mcconkey we may remember him from the new york giants and um uh, uh napoleon mccallum we may remember him from navy remember he was a heisman uh, candidate and went on to play for the oakland raiders back in the day um several of these other guys he got them got a hold of them and talked to them about what it meant every single one of them they may have gone on to have these amazing nfl careers or or entrepreneurial careers or military careers or whatever but they remember every time they played each other in the army navy game i mean and any loss sticks in their heads to this day and they one of them, and they, they said this over and over that uh, a couple of, the, of these guys any of them who lost it still eats at them if they lost if army guy lost to the navy team the navy team lost to the army the army team this is that one loss if i could just have that one game back that's the <laughs> one and this is kind of, this is kind of the spirit behind the game this is like they don't like to lose. And I think that that says something about America. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, nobody wants to lose. What a nice way to button up the show. More than a game. Got to check that out in the December edition of the American Legion magazine. National website, legion.org. Mr. Stouffer, you take care, and we'll talk to you in about a month, okay? All right. Sounds good, Flash. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Rich Fiesta on behalf of the Alliance for Retired Americans coming up next. This is America's Workforce. It takes Lyuna to keep America running. Over 70,000 public employees are part of Lyuna, the Laborers International Union of North America, delivering critical services such as health care and emergency response, as well as maintaining roads and sanitation systems. Even the National Postal Mail Handlers Union, representing over 47,000 U.S. postal workers, is affiliated with Lyuna. Find out what it takes for Lyuna to keep America running at Lyuna.org. That's L-I-U-N-A dot org. This segment of the show is brought to you by the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way Employees Division of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. For more information, please visit bmwe.org. Attention members of the Heat and Frost Insulators Union who are interested in traveling. Central Ohio has more construction projects on the books than anywhere in the U.S. Mega projects, large and medium-sized jobs are creating more work than our local 50 brothers and sisters can handle. Projects like Intel, the Honda LG battery plant, and multiple data centers for Facebook, Google, and Amazon offer union wages, overtime, and exciting incentives. Local 50 is seeking union travelers to meet the needs of its signatory contractors who can put you to work immediately. If you're a member in good standing and interested in the work opportunities in Central Ohio, visit insulators50.com forward slash AWF travel for more information. This portion of the show is brought to you by Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield, labor's trusted health partner, bringing people, communities, and care together to transform the future of health. For more information, please visit anthem.com slash labor and trust. The Ironworkers Great Lakes District Council, consisting of eight ironworker local unions in West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan. We build the skylights and bridges along the Great Lakes. With more work than ever before, the Great Lakes District Council is actively searching out the next great iron worker. Whether it's building the next Intel plant or constructing a bridge to safely connect our great cities along the lake. 
So join the Iron Workers Great Lakes District Council today. Find out how and learn more about the council by visiting IWDistrictCouncil.com. America's Workforce appreciates our sponsor, the Columbus Central Ohio Building and Construction Trades Council, who represents more than 18,000 workers from 19 affiliated local unions and district councils. Melwood, advancing economic independence for workers with disabilities for more than 60 years. Learn more by visiting melwood.org. Now, back to America's Workforce. Here's Ed Flash Ferens. And don't forget, you can check us out on Facebook or follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter. That would be A W F Union Podcast. Let's go to line number two and welcome to the show, Rich Fiesta, longtime supporter of America's Workforce on behalf of the Alliance for Retired Americans, where he serves as executive director. RetiredAmericans.org. Rich, welcome back to the show. I know the last time you and I talked on this show, you were getting out the vote, explaining to seniors the importance between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Well, talk to me about it. I know I know there's a bit of disappointment in the air. Talk to me about uh, the results of the election and what you see ahead. It's all yours, brother. Thank you, Flash, and good to be with you again. And, of course, the election did not work out the way we wanted to, both uh, presidentially and in Congress. So we are um, worried uh, on what the future is for programs like Social Security, Medicare, and the like there. The senior vote, actually, the plus 65 vote, went more Democratic, actually, more for Vice President Harris, uh, continuing the trend it has over the last four or five elections. But nonetheless, with uh, a completely Republican trifecta, and a number of um, privatizers, you know, in power now, both in the House and the Senate. And we'll see what happens in the administration. Seniors should be worried about their earned benefits, frankly. Yeah, I want to get into uh, some of the details on what we have to be prepared for. But let's look on the bright side here uh, for a moment. And I'm, I'm reading some numbers based on the records and positions of retiree issues, the alliance endorsed 263 candidates. This was prior to the election, of course. So of that amount, that 263, 186 candidates actually did win. Well, obviously not in the race for the White House. Maybe you could run down a few. I'm, I'm looking here, one uh, Tammy Baldwin. There's more. Why don't you uh, tell us some of the bright spots here, Rich? Yeah, that's right. We did have a number of retiree champions uh, who did win. Tammy Baldwin won re-election in Wisconsin. Uh, we elected a good friend, Alyssa Slotkin, to the open seat in Michigan, for example. And another longtime friend, Ruben Gallego, uh, won in Arizona for the open seat there. Uh, and I, the week before the election, I was in Nevada with uh, Senator Jackie Rosen. She won as well. And in the House, we won quite a number of uh, races of old friends throughout the country and um, some new ones as well in uh, New York, California, and the like, too. So, you know, we still have good pro-retiree, pro-worker members in Congress who will um, advocate not only for us, but for working families uh, as well. So basically, we have to defend Social Security programs like Social Security, Medicare, drug prices. Now, here's the scary part. I know the Inflation Reduction Act. Let's start right there. That has lowered prescription drug price. We've talked about this on the show. Is that in danger right now? And, and those prices could go back up, in your opinion? Well, yes, it is, uh, because of the, quite a number of Republicans ran on repealing things like the Inflation Reduction Act, as well as, you know, going all the way back to 2010, the ACA, the um, Affordable Care Act. So uh, we have to be worried about that because, you know, we have a lot of Alliance for Retired Americans members and seniors in general who uh, right now are only paying $35 for insulin that we're paying hundreds of dollars a month before. So we have to be very worried the way the budget rules work in the first six months of next year on whether or not we're going to keep all this good progress we've made over the last four and, uh, frankly, uh, 14 years. 
Let's talk about the solvency of Social Security, which is under the microscope right now because Trump said he wanted to eliminate taxes on Social Security benefits, also eliminate taxes for those who get tips and also overtime. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that going to do to Social Security? Yeah, that is going to drain or not actually drain. It's not going to put in money into the Social Security trust fund. And every economic evaluation of proposals like that show that the trust fund would go into imbalance in the year 2031 rather than the year 2033 or 4. So it actually will shorten the solvency of the trust fund, which is something nobody wants. No. You and I have talked about scrapping the cap. I mean, there's a certain amount. I think it's in the $180,000 range that you don't pay into Social Security anymore. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty much dead under this uh, the next Congress here? Uh, yes. I mean, we've had some good bills uh, through a number of years that the Alliance has supported uh, both in the House and the Senate. And all of them raise the um, cap on Social Security earnings. It's frankly, just a matter of simple fairness. Ideas like that, um, I think, are out the window, at least for the next two years in the coming Congress. All right. Now, let's talk about the, the Fairness Act here. There's something good did happen a couple of days ago, and uh, this is the Social Security Fairness Act. And this affects a lot of people that worked in the private sector and the public sector. And sadly, and I think this goes back, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was under Ronald Reagan where they decided if you worked in public and private, when you collected your public pension, they docked your private pension, which would be Social Security. First of all, am I correct? Did it happen around that time? And maybe you could uh, explain what, what happened in the House this week. Yeah, that's right. It's been this unfairness of uh, workers who worked for a state or local government and also uh, that does not participate in the Social Security system. A lot of state and local governments have their own retirement pension systems outside of Social Security. But regardless of that, if you worked, as you said, uh, in a private sector job in your career, your Social Security benefits were docked because of it. Completely unfair. And it's been very bipartisan. And uh, the Social Security Fairness Act, as it's known, that had 330, and you can't get people to agree on anything, uh, co-sponsors uh, passed the House on Tuesday overwhelmingly. And now we're waiting to see if the Senate has time to take it up between now and the end of the year to fix uh, this basic economic injustice, as you said, that's been going on since the 1980s. Yeah. So we're hopeful uh, the Senate can get it done. Now, you think that's going to happen here? I mean, we do have a Democratic majority in the Senate for now anyway. So is that possible? Well, we at the Alliance, we're um, having our members email or call their senators uh, around the country to ask that uh, the bill come up in the Senate. The Senate also has 60 co-sponsors of the bill, which makes it filibuster proof. So the question is, uh, can we create the activism to get it done uh, between now and the end of the year? And we're trying as hard as we can. I know you are. All right, buddy, we'll leave it on that note. We'll see what happens here. Rich Fiesta on behalf of the Alliance for Retired Americans. RetiredAmericans.org is a website, and you can follow them on X at Active Retirees. Active Retirees. You take care, and we'll talk next month, okay? Thank you, Flash. Talk to you then. And that'll be it for another edition of America's Workforce. Coming up on Monday, I am very excited to report that Julie Sue, yes, Julie Sue, the Acting Secretary of Labor for the United States of America will be joining us on our live line and also will check in with Skills USA because next week is National Apprenticeship Week. That's Monday. Until then, all of you have a safe and wonderful weekend. That concludes another episode of the America's Workforce Radio Podcast. Thanks for listening, and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a show. America's Workforce is a production of Labor Tools and BMA Media Group. Find out more information online at labortools.com.